Hey guys, this is Technology Mafia, and today we are doing a comparison video between two 35mm lenses for the Sony E-mount system. So A6000, A6300, and the newly announced A6500, which I'm very excited about, but that's not the point of this video. So these are the two lenses that I'm going to compare today. The first is the Sony SEL 35 f1.8, and the second is the budget candidate, and that is the newer 35 f 1.7. So let's take a look at how they perform. Okay, so first let's take a tour of what these two lenses look like. All right, so here are the two lenses, and you can see that size wise they are fairly similar. The SEL 35 is slightly longer, and the newer is slightly shorter. If I take this cap, these caps off, here they are. You can see that the opening, the front element is almost the same size. The newer is slightly larger. There it is from the side and the back. So the Sony lens obviously has autofocus, so it has all of the electronic connections. The newer lens is all manual, so it has none of the electronic connections at all. Both of them feel about the same when it comes to weight. In fact, I think the Sony is slightly lighter than the newer. All right, so let's take a look at some sample video and pictures that I took using both of these lenses. Okay, I'm gonna start by showing some clips of cars driving along a street here. This is the Sony SEL35. And the purpose of this video is just to show you how fluid the autofocus is on this lens. No issues with autofocus. Now we're switching over to the newer 35 and as you could see there is no autofocus so I am trying to manually focus on the cars as they are moving which is proving to be a little bit more difficult and because even though I'm using a tripod I have to adjust the focus manually you will see some more motion and this lens does not have the optical steady shot. So if the shot is not as steady, that is why. Moving on to pictures. This is a portrait of my wife. This is using the Sony SEL35. And now we can switch over to the newer 35. So let's go back one more time, the Sony and the newer. And you'll notice the colors on the Sony and the background blur and the colors on the background versus the newer. This is a zoom in close up. You could see the bokeh is smooth, nice. The skin tones are nice and natural on the Sony. They're a little bit more stark and pale. The background is nowhere near as contrasty on the newer. So here's another shot up close. You'll notice skin tone and background blur is the difference. Here is the newer and going back to the Sony and again the newer, Sony again, and the newer. You'll notice that the bokeh in the background of the newer is kind of weird. It's almost oval shaped versus the circular bokeh that you get with the Sony. This is just a 200% crop of the eye from the same picture. This is the Sony lens. You could see that the eye is not completely in focus. Now I'm using autofocus for this test, whereas the newer seems to be more in focus and I'm manually focusing this lens, which is surprising. You can see the hair strands even are more defined as well. Just to show you the distortion on the newer, here's the Sony SEL35, a picture of a garage door. And if we take that same shot with the newer, you can see the barrel distortion there. So let me show you that again. Here's the Sony and the newer. Here's the Sony again and the newer. What's interesting about this picture is when you zoom in and crop, you could look at that's the Sony shot and the newer looks sharper. It looks like there is a bit more sharpness. Now both of these shots were stopped down to f4. The portrait shots at the very beginning were shot at f1.8 and 1.7 respectively. So here's a shot of a car with a building in the background. Same thing that you'll notice with when we move from this is the Sony, we move to the newer. You could see a bit of barrel distortion there. We go back, 
colors of the trees are a little bit more natural in the Sony because this is at sunset. Now if we take a crop of a corner, here's the Sony image again at f4 and the newer image at f4 which is again surprising how sharp the newer is stop down. Another corner of the same image Sony and the newer you see the distortion there but the newer is sharp when you stop it down to f4. Very interesting comparison, definitely surprising. I was impressed with the SCL 35's colors and the speed of its focusing, its focusing accuracy. I think overall, if you're using a lens for video, the Sony is the way to go. If you're planning on doing any video, this is the best 35 millimeter fast focal length lens that you could purchase. Now, if you're just in it for the photography, if you're just going to use it to take pictures, you really can't go wrong with picking up a newer lens because it's so inexpensive. This is a $400 lens brand new versus a $60 to $70 lens brand new. And I don't see that there's that big of a difference. Obviously the distortion is worse with the newer, the colors are better with the Sony, but the newer is sharp. When you stop it down, it is a sharp lens. And in some instances, it is a sharper lens than the Sony SEL, surprisingly. So both of these are great lenses. I think for my purposes, because I'm using this lens primarily for video, I'm going to stick with the Sony 35. This newer will probably be on eBay soon. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Comment down below as to what you thought about the pictures, which one you prefer, and what you think about the price difference. Is the newer the better choice given the price? Is the Sony worth five times the price? Let me know what you think down below. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.